Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, Maya bloodletting. The ancient Maya participated in horrifying bloodletting rituals. These disturbing ceremonies involved siphoning blood out of a person to allow direct communication with the gods. The Maya called their bloodletting rituals Cha'ab, and they were specifically for the nobles and royalty. It was a way for the top members of society to communicate with their own royal ancestors and to speak with their mysterious deities. Bloodletting was done by perforating a specific body part and allowing the blood to run out. This could be anything from cutting open one's tongue to slicing their private parts. The ritual could be performed by men or women, so long as they had pure enough blood and were high up on the social ladder. However, it wasn't enough to just bleed themselves dry. The Maya needed to enter an altered state of consciousness in order to talk to the spirits and the gods. Before they started bleeding, they would usually fast for several days, smoke a lot of tobacco, and then take a ritual enema. The enema most likely contained hallucinogenic drugs. By the time they finally got around to the bloodletting, they were already extremely intoxicated. Once the bleeding began, the person participating would have visions and be able to communicate with their gods or ancestors. Typically, they would ask for things like rain, for success during the next battle, or to satiate whatever other needs and desires they may have had. Number 9. Land Diving Land diving is an ancient ritual that's still performed today by the men living in Vanuatu on the Pentecost Island. The ritual involves men jumping off a tower nearly 100 feet tall with nothing but a pair of tree vines wrapped around their legs. It's basically bungee jumping, but far more dangerous and has a much older history. The tradition of land diving goes back to an unknown time, but it definitely dates back to many centuries ago. The indigenous Pentecost Islanders would build towering platforms of wood, climb to the top, and then bungee jump using tree vines. If the dive went well, it symbolized a bountiful yam harvest to come. However, the ritual was about more than just juicy yams. The dive was, and still is, believed to enhance health, make the diver stronger, and heal the sick. It's also a symbol of masculinity, because only the boldest and bravest warriors participate. Those who refuse to dive are considered cowards and are often driven out of their tribe. According to the Guinness World Records, the G-force experienced by the land divers was the greatest experienced by any human prior to the industrialized world. These days, land diving has become a tourist attraction. It's still a practiced ritual, but now people travel from all over the world to see it done in person. Even Queen Elizabeth II went to watch the spectacle herself in 1974, but sadly, the jumper she witnessed hit the ground, broke his back, and died. Number 8. The Psychedelic Eleusinian Mysteries All throughout the ancient world, psychedelic drugs were used in strange and mysterious rituals. This was just as true in ancient Greece as it was for the Inca Empire on the other side of the globe. The Greeks preferred to use psychedelic drugs as part of their Eleusinian mysteries. The Eleusinian mysteries honored the goddess Demeter and her daughter, the wife of Hades, Persephone. These celebrations were considered the most sacred of all the ancient Greek religious festivals. The mysteries took place annually from at least 1600 BC until 392 AD. The festival was such a big deal that as soon as one ended, preparations for the next one began. However, the rituals were also very secretive. We know little about them today because the Greeks never allowed anyone to write down the specific details. One of the things archaeologists have learned from excavations is that the participants in the ritual ceremonies drank something called kaikion. This was a highly hallucinogenic liquid that was consumed after days of self-starvation. Once the participants were seeing sounds and tasting colors, nobody is really sure what they did. There was most likely dancing and some reenacting of Greek myths, but since writing about the Eleusinian mysteries was punishable by death, this is about as much as we know. Number 7. Stopping Ragnarok in Iceland, there is a dark and creepy cavern which may have been the site of ceremonial activity 1,000 years ago. Inside the cave, Viking elites may have participated in rituals to try and avert the apocalypse, known in Viking lore as Ragnarok. 
The cavern is about 980 feet beneath the entrance to a cave. Way down in the dark, archaeologists came across a structure built of rock and shaped like a boat. The team of researchers also found beads, decorative materials, and burned animal bones. The structure was made in the late part of the 9th century AD, after the first Vikings settled in Iceland. The cave itself was formed by a volcanic eruption that occurred soon after the Vikings arrived. Historians think the volcanic activity was so biblically terrifying to the Vikings that they saw it as a sign of the end of days. They believed Ragnarok was coming and that it would bring about the end of all things. So they tried to stop it. Archaeological evidence suggests they went down into the newly formed cavern, built themselves an altar, and sacrificed animals to try and appease the gods. The Vikings were so worried the world would end that they pulled out all the stops. They sacrificed goats, sheep, and every other piece of livestock they could find in order to try and prevent the incoming apocalypse. And apparently, it worked! Number 6. Dancing for Sekhmet Dancing was a major part of life in ancient Egypt. We know this because of paintings and inscriptions left on the walls of tombs and temples throughout the country. Countless statues, effigies, and figurines show Egyptian people in positions of dance, and they were doing this as far back as the New Kingdom, around 1570 BC. Most historians agree that dancing started as rituals to mourn the dead and to appease the goddess Sekhmet. In Egyptian mythology, Sekhmet almost destroyed all of humanity when Ra, god of the sun, asked her to punish all who had forgotten him. She was believed to be the goddess of war, disease, and destruction, and the Egyptians danced to appease her violent wrath. As the years went on, dancing became more and more important in ritual activity. Unfortunately, we don't know what any of their dances looked like. All we have are still images on the walls of tombs single snapshots of what was almost certainly a highly complex dance routine. We know dancers followed funeral processions and that the people mostly danced in groups. However, based on ancient paintings, men and women were not allowed to dance together. It was either groups of men or groups of women dancing, usually accompanied by music, and most of the time they were naked, except for a loincloth. Number 5. Aztec Human Sacrifice of all the horrendous rituals that took place in the ancient world, those of the Aztec were perhaps the most gruesome. When the Spanish arrived in the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan in 1521, brutal blood rituals conducted by Aztec priests were documented. These priests used sharp knives of obsidian to slice open the chests of their victims while they were still breathing. They then offered the beating heart of the victim to their gods before kicking the lifeless body down the steps of the great Templo Mayor. This was for a very long time believed to be nothing but propaganda. Modern historians figured the Spanish had made up the stories about sacrifices to paint the Aztec people in a poor light. This belief made the destruction, thievery, and enslavement committed by the Spanish more tolerable for their people. However, in 2015 and 2018, archaeologists found proof of the bloody rituals. They uncovered skull towers in Mexico City that confirmed the events described by the conquistadors. These towers were constructed on either side of the Templo Mayor and were used to show off the skulls of their many victims. It now looks like the Aztec really did commit mass amounts of human sacrifice. Expert John Verano from Tulane University says that these rituals were done for the greater good. For the Aztec, they were sacrificing people to save the world and it all had to do with their belief system. In Aztec mythology, the sun god Huitzilopochtli waged a constant war against the dark. The only way to keep him moving across the sky, fighting off the eternal darkness and preserving their lives, was to feed him human hearts. Number 4. Supernatural Water Rituals Archaeologists came across a mysterious wooden structure from the Bronze Age that was built in Italy over 3,000 years ago. It was likely used for mysterious water rituals involving the supernatural. Researchers believe the structure may have been a pool, and that it was positioned in such a way that it would reflect the sky and the burning sun. The way the water would have shimmered may have given those involved in the ritual the impression that they were looking into another dimension. Symbolically, this Bronze Age pool could have been used to lead people into a different realm. 
The exact time of construction was most likely around 1436 BC, when much of Italy was undergoing a religious revolution. The pool was found near the small town of Noseto in 2004 by Italian archaeologists. It was the primitive version of an infinity pool, about 40 feet long and 23 feet wide, with a depth of 10 feet. However, this pool wasn't found inside of any kind of structure and was built at the top of a hill and lined by wooden poles and beams. Sadly, nobody is sure what ritual took place here. All they can say for certain is that it had something to do with a mirror realm. The pool worked as an illusion, giving the participants the feeling that they were transcending the earthly plane and experiencing some kind of alternate dimension. Number 3. Mass Child Sacrifice 500 years ago in Peru, the single most horrific ritual in history took place. According to National Geographic, evidence for the largest incident of child sacrifice in the Americas and possibly the world was found on the north coast of Peru. This sacrifice took place more than 500 years ago, with over 140 children being ritually murdered in a single event. It happened on the edge of a cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean, just outside the capital city of the Chimu Empire. There were a lot of civilizations that practiced human sacrifice, especially in early Mesoamerica. However, most sacrifices were small, one or two people to appease the gods. In the case of the Aztec, they sometimes sacrificed a lot of victims at one time, but these were usually grown men and hardened warriors. The sacrifice that took place near the town of Juan Chaco was unlike anything else in the ancient world. It happened less than a mile from the city of Chan Chan, where the Chimu ruled over 600 miles of the Pacific coast from the border of Ecuador to Lima. The Chimu made up the largest empire in South America until they were defeated by the Inca in 1475. The sacrifice took place between 1400 and 1450, which has led scientists to speculate that the ritual could have had something to do with their impending doom. Whatever happened, there is no evidence anywhere else in the world of this large of a sacrifice. It's pretty horrific, and even included the murder of about 200 young llamas. Number 2. Magical Crystals In England, archaeologists have uncovered hundreds of fragments of rare quartz crystal. These fragments were excavated from a Neolithic ceremonial site, a place where early humans in Britain performed strange and mystical rituals. The crystal came from about 80 miles away, and it had been shattered into small pieces. Researchers believe the tiny fragments would have been presented to the locals as a kind of magical material. Nick Overton, an archaeologist from the University of Manchester, says the crystal is over 6,000 years old. This was a time when there was no glass, and no transparent material that ordinary people would have seen. This fact would have made the crystal, a material considered triboluminescent, something rare and exciting. People would have been mesmerized when they witnessed how the crystals refracted light and gave off flashes of blue. We don't know exactly what kind of rituals happened here, but the crystal was found on Doorstone Hill, which was part of a ceremonial landscape 1,000 years before Stonehenge. There would have been large stone structures, ceremonial altars, and primitive timber buildings. It was a huge complex dedicated to unknown ceremonies, and the crystal almost certainly played an important part. Number 1. The Fiery Death 20,000 years ago, a woman was burned to a crisp in a fiery death ritual. Her burnt remains were discovered in modern times in an ancient hunter's camp in Jordan. She most likely belonged to a primitive group of Neolithic humans living in the Middle East. The hunter's camp was a seasonal pit stop, little more than a group of huts that the nomadic tribe would have lived in. It's important to note the woman wasn't burned alive. At least researchers don't think she was. Instead, she was brought into a small hut after her death and set on fire. After she started to burn, she was turned on her side and her knees were bent against her chest. After that, those performing the ritual exited the hut and stood outside while the structure burned down and collapsed on itself. They then left the hut and the woman as is, leaving her body there to be found all these millennia later. Archaeologist Lisa Marr from the University of California says the ritual had something to do with how prehistoric humans viewed the dead. It was likely around 20,000 years ago that early men and women began to look at death 
as something more than just the demise of the body. They started seeing it as the shedding of the primordial flesh and the continuation of the soul. This primitive ritual was one of the very first death rituals ever conducted by humans. It could have been a way for the tribe to ensure the woman's soul would remain close to the living. Thanks for watching. Which of these ancient rituals do you think was the most extreme? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.